Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be making a tic-tac-toe game using vanilla JavaScript. This is the completed game. It works like you'd expect. You put your X's and your O's, and at some point you get a winner and the game ends. It can also check to see if nobody wins. And it'll let you know that it's a draw. This really isn't too hard to build. It's about 75 lines of JavaScript, a little bit of CSS, very small amount of HTML. So if you want to learn how to make it, this should be pretty quick and really simple. All right, so you'll see here, we just have three basic files, an index.html, a main.js, and a style CSS. That's all we're going to need for this. So we need to start with the index file. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I have a short code extension, but you can feel free to type this all out if you need to. This just gets the HTML up and running. And the first thing we can do in here is we can give it a header one with our game title. So let's say tic-tac-toe game. And you'll see too, I have a live server extension. So when I type HTML, it'll show up here. Next, we need a div with an ID of game container. We need another div with an ID of game over. This is going to be used for displaying our game over message. So let's put a span tag in here. With this span tag, we can add a dynamic variable here because obviously we don't know who the winner is going to be yet. And we should also link our script and our style sheet. All right, let's hop into our style sheet now. Uh, the first thing we can do is we can grab game over and we can say display none. And let's give it a bigger font size too. Let's say 30 pixels. Next, let's grab our game container. Let's give it a width of 1000 pixels and a height of 1000 pixels. You can give it whatever you want. If you want it to be a little smaller or bigger. And let's center it with margin zero auto. Just to make sure we're, everything's working, let's give it a background color of black. Awesome. You can get rid of that. We'll come back here in a bit, but for now, let's go into our JavaScript file. All right, so I'm going to start prototyping and templating this out. So the first thing I'm going to say is const container, because we're going to need that, which is going to equal document, get element by ID, and then that's going to be game container. Next, we can create an array. Let's call it square array. This is going to contain all of our tic-tac-toe squares when we make them. And then let's make a variable called next move. And that can equal x. I think tic-tac-toe starts with x. It could be o, but our game's going to start with x. And then we're going to need a couple functions, right? We're going to need to determine if game is over. So let's say function game over. Um, we need to determine if game is a tie. So let's say function is draw. And then we're going to need to determine who the winner is.
All right, that should be good for the functions. We can start creating our square now. I'm going to do this by making a class. So let's say class, class square. Uh, let's give it a constructor. This is going to take in an element and an index. Now we can say this dot element equals the element. This dot index equals the index. And let's say this dot state, let's set that equal to just blank. This class is going to need some more stuff, but we'll come back to it. What we can do now is start making our squares. So I'm going to do a standard for loop. Say if it's less than nine, because we need nine squares. And inside of this loop, we can say const div equals document, and then create a new element, which would be a divider. Let's give it some classes. I'm going to give it the class square. Um, let's also give it a class of not clicked. If we do this, then we can determine in the CSS if it's clicked or not and add a hover state so that you know if it's clickable square. Now we can create the object here. We can say const square equals new class square. And let's pass it the divider, which is the element, and our current index. Let's see, and then we can, let's say container, append child. We can put it in the document like this. And let's not forget to push it to our square array. Awesome. So one last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to console log the square array at the bottom. Refresh this, inspect it. Now if we look at this, we should see that inside of our game container we have a whole bunch of squares, which is perfect. And we also have our array here, which has all the data that we need. It's looking great. Let's get rid of the console log. Also I'm going to add a P element here to the divider. So I'm going to say div append child. And then document, create, element, and just a p tag. This will be used to hold our x or o, whatever the text is. Now we can start styling the square since we know it's there in the document. Let's give it a border of one pixel, solid, and black. I know it looks really funny. We're going to change that by styling this game container a little bit more. We're going to display flex. We're going to let it wrap. And we're going to give it a flex direction of row. And then we're going to justify the content by center. Still looks weird, that's fine. What we have to do here is give this a width of 30%. And there you go, tic-tac-toe board. I'm gonna add a few other things in here too. Let's say resize none. Let's give it a height of 35%. And then we also want to center our P tags once they show up. We can do that by displaying flex again and then justifying the content to center. And we want to center them vertically and horizontally, so we're also going to align the items centered. And that'll be visible once we get our P tags up and running.
Let's also add some styling for those. Uh, font size of 80 pixels. Let's make them bold. And let's center the text. Let's also center our header one. And let's add a hover element for if the square is not clicked, the second class we added. Let's say background, color, um, you can do whatever you want. Let's do the start green. Well, you know what, let's just do gray. Now what we need to do is we need to add a way to determine when a square is clicked. So let's add a method here called clicked. And inside this we can just say console log clicked plus this index so that we know which one we're clicking. And then when we created the element down here, what we can do is we can say div on click equals a function and here we're just going to call square clicked. Now if we open up our console here this should work. So the 0 index was clicked, the 1, the 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Perfect. That's working just as we want it to add the logic inside of the click function and get rid of this console log. We don't need it anymore. Let's say this state equals next move because once we click it, we want the state to be X or O. Let's remove the class of not clicked. This way it won't be hoverable and it won't look like it can be clicked. And then let's remove the clicking functionality altogether by changing the onClick property. You can just return false here. And ideally, this won't be clicking anymore. We'll know for sure in a minute though. Insert our X or O, so we can say this dot element query selector p inner HTML equals this dot state. See, these can't be clicked anymore, so that's working. But you'll see we're just getting X's. That's fine because we haven't added the code yet to change that. So let's say next move, we're going to do a tenary statement here. We're going to say if it equals x, then we're going to set it equal to o. Else, we're going to set it equal to x. And now we should be alternating. Awesome. We're going to have to run a few functions in here too. We're going to have to run one game. Right, because if you click an element and that one wins the game, we want to detect that. So let's say if one game, we can return game over. The winner is player then we can just add the state and it'll say you know the winner's player X or the winner is player O. We should also determine if it's a draw or not. So let's say if is draw. We can return another game over. Uh, this time let's pass the message. It is a draw. And then the last thing we have to do is build out these two functions or these three functions, sorry. 
let's start with the game over message because we're going to need that either way. Let's say document and then get the element winner and set the inner HTML to a message we're going to pass in. And then we're going to want to not display the container anymore. And we're going to want to grab the game over and display that. To code it out, we can just say let, um, let's say should return equal true, and then return this. Then we can do uh, for each loop here on the square array. Uh, we're going to need the state. I'm going to just destructure it. And inside of this, we can just say if the state is equal to a blank string, then should return will be false. Right, because the game's over if it returns true. So this is looping through them all. And if any of them are not checked yet, they don't have a state, then it'll return false. But if they're all checked, it'll return true. And if this works, we should get a game over message. Perfect. It did not return the message though. Oh, that's why. For some reason, I did a comma instead of a period. Sorry about that. There we go. Perfect. Now we're going to need to determine if the game is won or not. I'm actually just going to steal this code and I will explain it because I have done this several times in different programming languages and I know how to do it. And it's always the same. So basically what you have is you have all of the lines here. These are all of the possible winners, I guess you could say. And what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all of the lines. And we're going to first say, you know, if the state is not equal to a blank square, because here we're using blank squares as our placeholder, then we keep going. But also, if this is the first state, the second state and the third state all equal the same thing, all equal X or all equal O, then the game is won. And this 0, 1, 2 is just 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5. These are all just possible ways that it could win. That's why I copied and pasted it because I didn't want to have to write it out. But this should make sense. If it doesn't, let me know and I will try to explain it better. All right, let's make sure that it's working here. Nice, it works for X. Let's test it with O2. Awesome, so that is the whole tic-tac-toe game. It was super easy to make. Hopefully this all makes sense. If anything doesn't make sense, let me know and I can try to explain it better. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you found it helpful, feel free to leave a like. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, feel free to subscribe. I hope you all have a great day. Take it easy.